a priori or a priori. What is that? In this video, we'll cover what it is and what it is not. I'll go over several different ways in which the topic of a priori even comes up. I'll also discuss several different philosophers who have very different ideas about what this means. Let's get started. A clue into what it means is this word in English, prior. However, the phrase a priori or a priori is Latin. It's Latin for meaning before experience or without experience. Compare to what most people say is the opposite of a priori, a posteriori. And you can see here something like the English word posterior, meaning after or behind or in sequence, later, coming from or coming through, posterior. So these will help you understand the concepts or remember them as well. However, these are Latin phrases, so that's not exactly what's happening. So we can think about a priori, meaning before, the former thing in something, and a posteriori is after, derived from, coming later. Okay, so before what, after what? There's lots of different contexts, mostly within epistemology, or at least metaphysics, philosophy of mind, where these phrases will arise. A priori knowledge would be something that you know before something happens. A priori justification, a priori experience, but there might also be a posteriori knowledge that's something that you know after a particular experience or justification that requires something to come before it. So a posteriori typically just means something that is derived from something else. It comes in a sequence. It is post or posterior, after, whereas a priori means prior, before. And I should note that this distinction is controversial. For example, Quine argues that we shouldn't take this distinction so seriously. Nevertheless, this distinction between a priori and a posteriori has been central to many debates in philosophy. For example, the debate between rationalism and empiricism. To name some philosophers, Rene Descartes and some others like Leibniz and Spinoza also agree that rationalism is true, that it is not knowledge we have from experiences through our senses that is fundamental, but instead the knowledge that is built in that is fundamental. Whereas empiricists such as David Hume say, your thoughts before experience will not get you knowledge. The empiricists believe that the knowledge you have after experiences or through the senses is actually fundamental. Now notice, that there's a reason uh, we talked about Quine first and then are talking about this distinction, rationalism versus empiricism. Quine is telling us that there isn't this stark contrast between knowledge before experience versus knowledge after experience, but the empiricists and the rationalists are arguing about the best source of knowledge, the most reliable source of knowledge, and they are depending their views on the idea of these being fundamentally different. Focusing more on a priori, is it even possible and how is it possible to have knowledge without experience? How can there be knowledge in your mind that didn't get into your mind from your senses or through your senses? German philosopher Immanuel Kant takes the concept of a priori and then distinguishes it even further, breaking it down into analytic versus synthetic a priori judgments. And he asks the question how these are even possible. On the contrary, David Hume argues this guy, the empiricist, that there is no such thing as synthetic a priori judgments. Do you think that when you're born, you are born already with complex ideas encoded into your mind? David Hume, the empiricist, says no, and a lot of empiricists believe in this idea of tabula rasa, blank 
canvas or blank tablet, that when you are born, you're born an empty slate. Aristotle writes about this, and so do some of the Muslim uh, philosophers. And everything you experience implants or encodes your behavior and your beliefs and your character. However, Gottfried Leibniz, the one who thinks empiricism is wrong, talks about a priori judgments, and he has a whole theory about innate ideas, about how when you are born, there are things in your mind that you already have. This gets into the nature versus nurture debate. There is an analogy between nature versus nurture and a priori versus a posteriori. There's lots of different ways to talk about what is a priori. Whatever you do, think of the idea of it being prior to a priori justification or a priori knowledge is independent of experience, prior to experience, not derived from experience. And then remember that this doesn't just have to be like visual perceptions. It would be anything that goes through your senses, hearing it, smelling it, touching it, tasting it, seeing it. And there are lots of different philosophers who have talked about a priori, either positively or negatively, for many different reasons in lots of different fields. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I hope you dig in deeper.